let's look at doing empirical formulas and comparing them against molecular formulas. You'll recall that an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of substances that we deal with. So if I end up with something like lithium iodide, like that, it's an empirical formula, one lithium to one iodine. If I look at calcium iodine, that's an empirical formula, lowest ratio of each one of them. But I've got a group of elements, molecules, that are compounds, known as molecules, that don't exist in their empirical formulas. They appear like hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. That is not its lowest whole number ratio. The lowest whole number ratio of this would be one to one, but the real molecule exists as a two to two. It's connected together with a hydrogen, bonded to an oxygen with its unshared pair of electrons, another oxygen down here, a shared pair of electrons, and the hydrogen like that. There's no way it could exist as HO. Not to be confused with the hydroxide ion, OH negative. There's no charge here, you can't just break it up. That's its known compound. Well, if you uh, try to calculate the empirical formulas from its percent composition, it's typically the way it's done. You go to the lab, you do an experiment on a compound that you know the elements, but you don't know its uh, chemical formula. We come up with a compound, for example, that's known to be 88.8% oxygen by mass and 11.2% hydrogen by mass. Now, in order to calculate its empirical formula, it's almost like the reverse of determining percent composition. We're going to start with the percents, but there's an easy switch that you can make. If you remember percents as parts of 100, then those two together combine to make 100. So I could say, by removing the percent sign, that I had a sample that was 88.8 grams of oxygen and 11.2 grams of hydrogen. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do, that's step number one, is to change your grams into, or excuse me, to change your percent into grams. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert each one of them to moles. At 16.0 grams per mole of oxygen, and it's real important you label all the way through the end here. And at 1.0 grams per mole, I end up with 11.2 moles of hydrogen and 5.6 moles of oxygen. So it's the second step. First step, go to grams. Second step, go to moles. Once I've done a mole ratio with the two, I need a whole number mole ratio, not just a mole ratio. So I'm going to divide by the smallest number of moles there. The 5.6 moles is the smallest I will divide 11.2 by the 5.6. Now, if I divide both of them, 5.6 moles of oxygen on the top, 5.6 moles of oxygen on the bottom, that one cancels out. It goes equal to 1. But this one doesn't, and it reduces. But when it reduces, something very important has to happen. I end up with 2 over 1, but I cannot leave out my units. The word mole will cancel, but the H and the O don't. So I end up with 2H over 1O, uh, not to be confused with a 0. Now, I have a 2 to 1 ratio, hydrogen to oxygen. If you think about it, yes, you guessed it. H2O is the correct chemical formula we're dealing with. Steps then, go to grams, convert it to moles, divide by the smallest, maintaining your units, and then just assign it to the chemical formula. Generally, the ones on the left side of the periodic table precede the one on the right on the periodic table. And you should be able to use that generally to assemble a proper formula. And then you need to start watching certain compounds. That, uh, you know, like hydrogen and carbon. Hydrogen always follows carbon. I should say always, generally follows carbon. All right, let's use another example. Let's take an example that is 43.64 grams phosphorus and it's 56.36 grams oxygen. Follow our same rules. 
So it's a periodic table. Get each one of them, 16.0 grams per mole for the oxygen. Phosphorus is 31 grams per mole. And we'll do the division. Go ahead and perform the math on the calculator. Divide by the smallest, 1.41 mole phosphorus. And I end up with an interesting number. I end up with 2.50 over 1 P. Now, that's not a whole number ratio, but it is a ratio. And if you look at it, 2.5 is actually 2 and a half, correct? Well, that 1 half tells us that if I wanted to clear the 1 half, I just need to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So I ended up by my ratio then becomes 5 oxygen over 2 phosphorus. The correct empirical formula is known then as P2O5. Now, those kinds of problems, there again, take it to grams. This one was already in grams per 100 gram sample. Convert each one of them to moles. Divide by the smallest. If you have some fractions, clean the fractions up and write your empirical formula. Common fractions you can expect to see are things like one-halves and one-thirds. Anything more than that, and you don't really come into it very commonly. You might find a one-fourth, and in order to do that, you just clean that up and end up with a, a five-to-four ratio, for instance, as a lowest whole number ratio on that. You just take your fraction, the denominator of your fraction will give you your multiplier, you multiply both sections by that. Now, there's another thing that's interesting about this, and that is that this example is not the actual molecular formula. All we've done is determine its empirical formula. The compound has a different known molecular mass of 230, uh, or excuse me, 283.88 grams per mole. That's what the known molecule weighs. In order to, to determine if this is the correct molecular formula, we're going to kind of reverse that process and add together the phosphorus and the oxygen and find out what we refer to as the empirical formula mass instead. If I take the phosphorus at 31 grams per mole times two of them, and I add to them five oxygen, I find that this thing the empirical mass is 142 grams per mole. And the real one is 284 grams per mole. Can you see what we have to do to the empirical formula to get the actual formula? If we divide the molecular formula by the empirical formula, we get a multiplier. Get a ratio too. That means this is actually one half what the real molecule weighs. Well, in order to cure that, it's a simple transition. Double everything there. P4H, I said that, P4O10 is the correct molecular formula for that compound. Even though it's not an empirical formula, the real molecule does not exist this way, it exists that way.